So you think you've mastered solving a linear system by substitution. Not until you've solved the two problems that I'm going to show you in this video. At first glance, there's nothing really strange about this linear system. Y is almost isolated, so substitution seems to be easy enough. But there is one step later on in this example that I want to highlight that really throws students for a loop. So let's go ahead and start here by isolating Y. And we'll do that just by moving 3x over to the other side to get negative 3x plus 4. Remember that substitution tells us we can substitute an expression like negative 3x plus 4 into our other line wherever we see a y. And after I've done that, it's really just a matter of applying some algebra to clean things up and solve for x. And we're going to do that using some algebra strategies like the distributive property. Multiplying negative 3 by both terms in my brackets is going to result in 2x plus 9x minus 12 equals 1. And at this point, we can collect our two terms with an x to get 11x. We can move our negative 12 over to the other side to get 13. And you'll see that I'm left with a simple one-step equation. Dividing both sides by 11 will allow us to solve for x, giving us an x value of... Wait, what? A fraction? It may surprise you, but yes, points of intersection can have fractional values. I've seen many students just give up at this point and assume that what they did is wrong. Don't do that. Let's keep going and see what happens. If you're not a fraction person, you can think of 13 over 11 as approximately 1.182, if that makes it any easier for you. We'll keep marching along as usual with our substitution method and sub this fractional x value into our expression for y. Now, because we're working with fractions, there is a bit more thinking that goes into solving for y. And this is where students tend to get really confused and where a lot of the mistakes happen. We can multiply our negative 3 by the numerator of 13 to get negative 39 over 11. And remember, when you're adding fractions or adding a fraction to a whole number, we need a common denominator. 4 is the same as 44 over 11, so we now have two fractions with common denominators. We can add our numerators, keeping our denominator the same, which leaves us with 5 over 11, which is another fractional y value. Less surprising this time. And if you're a decimal person, that's the same thing as 0.4545. So we can think of this point of intersection as either 13 over 11, 5 over 11, or 1.182, 0.4545. 1 and when we graph these two lines, we can see that they intersect at that point. Now, this is a great example because it shows just how useful substitution really is. Here's another example that really tends to confuse students. So here we have y equals negative 3x plus 1 and y equals 4x plus 8. What do you do if you have two equations that both have y isolated? These types of systems tend to throw students for a loop, but it turns out solving them is actually a lot easier than you might think. Since this expression is equal to y and this expression is equal to y, we can set these two expressions equal to each other. Think of it as subbing this y into that y. And when we do that, we have an equation with only x's in it. As usual, we can apply some fancy algebra to collect our x terms on the right side of the equation just by adding 3x over to the other side. And we can collect our terms without an x on the left side of the equation by subtracting 8 over to the other side. We can collect any term with an x and separately collect any term without an x leaving us with a simple one-step equation. Dividing both sides by 7 will give us an x value of x equals negative 1. Since we have no fractions here, the rest of this example is just like any other substitution problem. We have x, so to solve for y, we just need to substitute x equals negative 1 into our expression for y. And since we have no fractions here, this is a simple calculation that will leave us with y equals 4. And we can confirm that our point of intersection is in fact negative 1, 4 by looking at the graph of these two lines and seeing that they do in fact intersect at that point. Now, not every linear system should be solved using substitution. I've seen a lot of students try to use substitution where they shouldn't, and it leads to a lot of confusion. Now, to make sure that this doesn't happen to you, you're going to want to head over to this video right here where I will teach you all about elimination, and I will see you there.